Aloha. Welcome to Leeward Community College's very first live information session on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope we'll have a lot of the uh, answers to your questions today. It's my honor to now introduce and present to you our Chancellor, Carlos Peñalosa. Thank Carlos? you, Kathleen. Aloha, everyone, and thank you for spending some time with us today. The last few months have resulted in some necessary changes, and we are just about ready to get back on track. The college has been really busy prepping for fall, and I want to thank the faculty, staff, administration, and students that have worked tirelessly to get us going into a safe and welcoming environment in the fall. Much of the work we've done include uh, modifying some spaces to promote social distancing, as you've probably been hearing in the media and seeing out in, 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 the, in the outside world. Our faculty have been developing tools and options to deliver your classes in a remote capacity or in person while maintaining that social distancing. Uh, we've been adjusting our class schedules, again, to continue promoting the best practices that the CDC has been publishing. We realize that some of these changes are not always what we're looking for, but, at but the times are calling for it and Leeward has really stepped up to the plate. Most of our services will be in operation in some adjusted capacity. If you've been working with us over the summer and in the late spring, uh, you would have noticed that many of our services were still working and operational uh, in a remote capacity. Some of this will continue to be the case, uh, but, but we will have our campus open and a lot of the services still offered on site. Um, as we move into the fall semester, and in a couple of, uh, of seconds we'll get into some questions, uh, we do want to uh, be able to promote some of the safe practices that um, the governor and mayor have been pushing forward and the University of Hawaii have been publishing in terms of our best practices and guidelines to come back. And this really, in a nutshell, is respecting each other's space, wearing facial coverings, reducing the amount of people that we have in indoor spaces and congregations as well as not coming onto campus when we're not feeling well. And again, this is to respect ourselves and respect everyone else. Um, and so with that, some of the things that you will experience when you come to campus is that our, our spaces will be open, but they will be op operating in a somewhat restricted fashion. Um, we will inc be encouraging appointments just because we want to reduce the number of people in any given space. And so it will feel very similar to a lot of the public services that you've been, um, you've been taking advantage of in the community, whether it's a supermarket or, or a pharmacy. There are some practices that we're trying to pull, push forward so that we could come back in a safer, in a safer way. And so I know that you're all here for, um, for, for some of the questions that have been submitted, and so we're going to get started on that. And so, Kathleen? Okay. I'm going to be uh, asking the questions that were uh, sent to us by our students, uh, current and potential. Uh, any questions that we don't get to today, we will have them addressed on a web page, and we'll give that to you later. The first question to get us started, so a student says, I registered for this fall semester, and I'm wondering, how will I find my classes on the first day? Well, like any other typical semester, we will have uh, welcoming stations around campus where uh, we will be helping you on, on finding where your classes meet. Uh, but initially, what I, what, what I do want to get to is that a lot of the classes have changed, and so some of them are going to be online. You won't have to come to campus for that purpose. But looking for your schedules and on STAR um, will be very helpful. If you aren't able to do that, we're going to have some information later on and some links where you could call in, uh, and we could help you in finding what you, where your classes will be meeting. Uh, the schedules are up to date. We do have a spreadsheet that we'll show later on uh, where you will be able to find where, where the class is meeting, when it's meeting, um, and in what capacity, because again, not, not all of the classes are meeting in the same way. Uh, but again, coming in, um, on, on the first day uh, will be pretty telling. You'll, you'll see a lot of people trying to help out. Uh, you will be seeing some of the offices and resources that are available to you, and maybe um, some of the services you'll be able to take advantage of. Some others, you may have to make some appointments and, and work through a distance modality. Okay. So another student wants to know that when they come to um, class in fall, is there going to be anything open? Absolutely. Um, we, are trying, we, we are doing our best right now to have all of our services operational. 
um, again, on campus and in a remote capacity. We're trying to encourage remote, discourage the face-to-face -face interaction just so that we could manage the, the volumes of, of, of people on campus and in each office. But everything from library resources right down to being able to get you know, a laptop, some classrooms, um, admissions and records, financial aid, all of our services are operational as soon as we get back uh, on the fall. In fact, currently many of our services are still very much operational and so it's just a matter of going to our website uh, and linking and connecting with, with some of these resources. And so yes, everything will, I'll take that back, almost everything will be, will be available um, but just in an adjusted capacity. And so it'll look a little bit different, but we're trying, to, we're trying our best to make it as seamless as possible for everyone. Perfect. Um, I'm not sure if they were asking about this, but does that include the food service? If they're gonna be, do we know that yet? Like, like, like most of the public services and restaurants and cafeterias, we've been following some waves where because of the different uh, scales of COVID, cases that we're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. We're following what the mayors and governor are, are declaring and as to the services that are available. And so we will have some uh, uh, food capacity, but that's all gonna be very responsive to what the, what the county and the state does in terms of allowing. So yes, the cafeteria will be available for food. Thank you. Um, another question. I'm very worried about paying tuition on top of the supplies, textbooks, out-of-pocket expenses. Will the classes be online or in person? I'm curious, especially with COVID situation going on. And then there was a sad face emoji. <laughs> I, I, I totally get that question. And many of us have been expressing similar uh, on sad emojis, um, mainly because we would wanna operate in a, norm, in a normal capacity, but because we're in the middle of this pandemic, it is, it is challenging. For the most part, the college, the faculty, the staff, the administration, and everyone really has been putting all of their effort together to provide our, our education in the best capacity that we can. So a couple of things. Many of our classes are online, and so those are gonna operate whether or not the campus is, is, is open. Um, for the classes that are still being offered in a face-to-face -face capacity on campus, because we are reducing the number of people that are on campus, we think that we could maintain you know, in a relatively safe environment where we are reducing the chances of spread um, of COVID. That being said, we are also considering the possibilities that everyone's been calling, whether healthcare officials uh, and Department of Health, um, if there is another spike of COVID and we are asked to close the doors, we are preparing ourselves to transition classes online. And so the long and short is whether anything else happens or not, the classes will carry on. Some classes were a little bit more difficulty than other, others, but for the most part, the plan that we put in place really does address most of these instances. And so I would say that it's pretty safe to register. Uh, the classes will run. Um, and if there are any changes that need to come about, we are much more prepared today than we were in spring when we, were, we, we still managed to move them forward. Our faculty have been very creative and some of you have been experiencing some of that in some of the more practical classes where we were still able to complete the classes. And so in reducing the volume of people here, I think that we'll be managing pretty well. So it is safe to, to register. Okay, can I just add for the, the concern about tuition and supplies and books. I just wanna put on a small plug for our open educational resources. Uh, Leeward has always been, will always be in the lead for offering textbook zero cost classes. Uh, I don't have an exact count, but last semester I think we were over 40% of our classes. You didn't have to pay for your textbook, so a good reason for choosing Leeward. Now, out of marketing and back into information, <laughs> Um, the next question is, while trying to enforce social distancing, will desks be spaced out in the classroom and how will this affect classroom capacity? Absolutely, some of the changes that we've been putting forward and this has been a collaboration many people here on campus as well as University of Hawaii, is that we are following social distancing practices where we are working on six foot distance between individuals and classrooms. Now that means that whereas before we might have been able to fit in 35 students into a classroom, maybe we'll fit in only 20. 
we've adjusted all of this, we've measured distance between stations and the different classrooms, adjusted those um, classroom capacities so that we can um, be a little bit more confident on that social distancing. There are some instances where classes are a little bit more practical and there's gonna be a little bit of movement. We're gonna work on those details a little bit more as you guys come to class, but for the most part, the, the, the classroom capacities have been adjusted so that we could promote that safe distancing. And so some of this will come about in, a, in some guidelines that we are publishing within the next couple of weeks, uh, outlining how all of these classroom uh, uh, capacities have been adjusted. Okay, thank you. The next question is, I was wondering if we'll be transferring to completely online classes in fall 2020. So that's not the current goal. Uh, we do want to offer some classes face-to-face, -face, mainly because some, some are very difficult to offer remotely, especially the more hands-on classes, like the lab sciences in some instances, as well as maybe automotive and culinary style classes where the practice is, is essential. That being said, our faculty are, have been working pretty creatively with some tools that have become available and that we've gotten. Uh, to help promote some more of that social distancing. And so we are doing some more activities online. In the event that there is a declared um, uh, e emergency or closure from the county or the state, we will have to abide by that. There is also the possibility that for an interim period, if there is a, a, a positive COVID test in, in some space used here on campus, we may need to close that space and maybe relocate or send those online until we're able to clear the space and come back. And so the goal is not to have everything online in the fall. The goal is to have quite a bit online in the fall. But if we're forced to, we are much readier to do that at this point than we were before. Terrific, thank you. The next question is, it, and this one is specific to a particular program. It, it's asking is how you are handling classes that require in-class hours. Will there be an alternative way for these education classes to get those classroom hours? Sure, and I'm, I'm gonna answer in a more general way. Um, mainly, the, the best source of this information will be the instructors teaching these classes because they will vary a little bit from class to class and course to course. But this question is reflecting uh, experiences that happen in other locations, like maybe an elementary school. Um, and so in those instances, we have gotten clearance from our accrediting bodies as well as other local organizations that we could have alternative experiences that can, that can happen. Uh, maybe the total number of hours for the experiences can be reduced. Um, and there may be some virtual opportunities to, to still meet those hours and competencies. But because that happens in various different types of courses, your best source of that information is connecting with the instructor that's teaching the class. And so once you're, you, you connect with them, they will give you a little bit more of the details. We want the experience and we want you to meet the, 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 the learning outcomes, but we also want to do it in a, in, a, in a safe environment where we're where we are dealing with, with this current pandemic. Okay, next question is, how will I manage the COVID-19 rules while I'm on campus grounds? That's a, that's a good question. Um, I, I think that it's going to be a big reflection of what we do on our day-to-day -day outside. For instance, going to the supermarket, going to the pharmacy, or even filling at the gas station, there are expectations that have become pretty, pretty, pretty standardized. And so that's using our face coverings as well as constant uh, hand sanitizing, sanitizing of the spaces. Um, in returning to, to, to Leeward, um, we do have some, uh, some guidelines that are gonna be published and we're gonna be sharing more of this with everyone, but there are expectations uh, that, that, that require us to wear our face coverings and we all wear them all the time uh, whenever we're not able to maintain that social distancing. So in enclosed spaces, in the classrooms or when interacting with other people, it's for the respect of the other people as well as your own safety that we're asking that you wear those masks. We're gonna have signage absolutely everywhere, just reminding us to 
wash and sanitize our hands and avoid touching our faces whenever possible. These are habits that over time will, will, will get a little bit better. And so in following those guidelines, there'll be constant reminders. Whether other classmates or faculty and staff remind you of some of these practices, we'll try to make it as obvious as possible in as simple as having indicators of where six foot distance may, may be. So if you're making a line, there'll be indicators of where you probably will stand, more or less like when you go to the supermarket and so and having similar signage. And so not much is changing in what would be the educational path. All that's changing is how many people we let into some spaces and, and how much of an interaction we're gonna be allowing. And so as an example, our library and learning commons, we're gonna have restricted number of people that we allow in that space, but that's again, to work on that social distancing and to reduce the likelihood of any, of, of any spread. Um, the other one, and the one that I think that is most critical to the safety of everyone in your families, yourself, as well as everyone here at Leeward, is that if you have any symptoms, uh, you will be asked to, uh, to communicate that and then stay home. Uh, until you've been cleared to come back to the campus. That becomes really important um, because again, we know the different symptoms that, that indicate whether you may be uh, uh, infected with COVID. Um, and so we just ask that we avoid any instances where this is brought to campus so that we don't have to do any major closures and so that we remain healthy. Um, and so that's how we, we would operationalize it. There are going to be posters with some of these guidelines, especially where they're most applicable. Um, and so we are doing our part to make it clear, um, as well as reducing foot traffic in some areas that require major maintenance. Uh, Leeward has plans to do more frequent uh, sanitation and cleaning of spaces that have the high foot traffic. We're trying to restrict some spaces so that we don't have to do that cleaning as often. And so with all of these different practices that we've put together, you as a student will have hopefully not such a difficult time in seeing or understanding some of these, um, some of these uh, guidelines uh, for, for the return to campus. Terrific. The next question is, will students be given the choice to get tested for COVID-19 on campus if they choose to do so? So, so right now, um, your, your medical provider and the Department of Health are where we are guiding individuals if they, if they wish to be tested. We do not have the facilities and we're not in a position to do the testing. Uh, but, but in communication with, with our different support services, we may be able to identify those resources for you and help you if that's where you need to go. Um, we are asking that if there is a need because you're having some of these symptoms that you connect with us electronically first and we'll help you in, get, in getting some of these, um, identifying some of the locations where you can be tested, but we're not doing that here at Leeward at this time. Thank you, Carlos. I'm gonna take a second. I just wanna throw up a, a slide if the great guys in the control room could put, that, put this up. For, uh, for everyone there who's listening in, um, just wanted everybody to know that we have four uh, breakout sessions that's gonna be offered via Zoom. Uh, following uh, uh, when the chancellor is done speaking, we think it'll be approximately 2.45. And there are four different sessions. The one's paying for college, the online AA program, returning to college if you've been gone for a while, and the different program options you have. And the links to all those Zoom sessions are contained underneath the video you're watching right now. I should be doing this, um, except you can't see me. <laughs> uh, and um, the links are there, and at, at 2.45, you'll be able to join in. There's no password needed. And uh, now we're going to get back to the questions and to the chancellor. Is there any way to get notifications for logging into Laulima for further assignments? Sure, and so we, we've come to realize that for many of you that have not taken online classes or haven't taken many online classes that there may be tips and tricks as well as some guidance that we can provide and we tend to have those activities and those resources um, available to the students that are registering intentionally for online and so because of this transition where many of you are going to be seeing more classes online or in a hybrid capacity we're going to be offering some workshops where we'll be able to guide you and take you through these. We have the resources available. Um, 
within the next day or two, we're going to be uh, updating our website so that it includes links to some workshops that you could do at your own pace. But then we will also be able to offer some uh, with live individuals that can help you maybe answer more specific questions. More specifically to the question that was asked, there are some things and some assignments that based on how they are entered into La Lima, we may be able to get notifications of maybe when they are due. Um, and so some of this will be able to provide more guidance as we go through some of these workshops. And so these are coming about because we realize that some students would benefit incredibly from having some of these tips and tricks at, at their disposal. Great. Um, and that website that uh, those tips will be on, will be located, you just go to the home page of Leeward, there's gonna be a big button that says student info. Click there and everything you need will be on that one web page. The next question is, if the delivery method is hybrid, for example, right now, is that for the duration of the semester? So, yes and no. <laughs> Let me clarify a little bit. The intent on the current schedule is that if, if things don't necessarily change, then the schedule will remain the same for the remainder of the semester. So if it's in a hybrid capacity, um, it will remain hybrid. The only instance where something can change to the schedule is in the event that um, there is a declared uh, closure by the county officials or the state officials or the mayor or the governor that we have to close down again because of another spike on COVID-19. Uh, but unless that happens, those classes will remain in that capacity. Okay. Um, if we're having lab classes or online classes, are we still going to take exams during the week originally scheduled? Sure, and so some of the classes, whether they're scheduled online or face-to-face, -face, they have, uh, they, they, they've identified times when the classes are meeting. You can have classes, um, uh, exams and assignments during those times specifically. And so unless it is completely uh, to be announced and it's not scheduled on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from certain time to certain time, um, those are the only instances where you're not gonna have a specific scheduled assignment. But if the time is allotted, you may need to take an exam during that time. And so even if it's online or hybrid, there may still be an expectation that you are online or on campus at a specific time to complete a test. For example, uh, you know whether it's a midterm, a final, or an activity at that specific time. And so um, I, I think I, I got to... Right. I think that sort of says it all. <laughs> uh, important thing is always listen or ask your instructor when in doubt, ask mm -hmm. your instructor. Uh, here's another question that is specific to one class, but I think uh, applicable to many is, uh, are we going to have tutoring for Physics 100 one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom? Yes, and so because we are shifting quite a bit online, um, our services too are gonna have some proportion of their services online. And so like we did in the spring and like we've done a little bit in the summer and now moving forward to the fall, there's gonna be tutoring that's gonna happen uh, traditionally on campus by appointment. Again, we're trying to reduce foot traffic, uh, but we're also promoting through Zoom and online and through other online services. So tutoring will be available. Um, all that we ask is that you coordinate with the right office and that you plan for um, schedules. So you plan for appointments uh, because we're going to have to shuffle around quite a bit of things to maintain the social distancing. Okay. What days and times are we going to have classes on our laptops? Ah, that really depends on the course that you, that, that, that you uh, registered for. Um, and so your best resource is your instructor as well as uh, the details on STAR for your course. And so if the course is listed as www that's an online class um, if there is a specific time with the www that means that there is a scheduled portion to the course so even though you're able to take the course from the comfort of your home there may be a live component that's going to happen at that prescribed time and so that would be in your schedule and you could find that in star Alternatively, there are some online classes that don't have that scheduled component. And what that really means is that you're gonna have assignments that are due at specific times, but you get 
a week or even longer to complete those assignments. And so you have to pace yourself accordingly to complete those assignments. And so it really depends on the class. Your best resource is gonna be the, the schedule that's listed in STAR for your class, as well as your instructor to give you more guidance on what those, those timely expectations are for each course. Okay, next quest question is uh, about masks, which you and I both have on our <laughs> table right now. But will masks be required to be worn at all times even in the classrooms, parentheses, the student hopes so. <laughs> yes, and so what we are put, putting forward as the guidelines for return here to Leeward is that we do have to wear our face coverings, especially when social distancing is not, is not something that can be done easily. Inside classrooms and in inside spaces, there is an expectation that you do wear your mask because these are spaces where social distancing is difficult. Uh, the, other, the other thing is that there may be some spaces where you are isolated, and in those instances, you may be able to not wear your mask, but for the most part, if you're interacting with anyone, if you are close enough to other people, you are going to be expected to wear the mask for the safety of everyone. And so that's going to be put forth in our, in our written guidelines for the return to fall. Okay. If there is a positive case that originates from our campus, what actions will be taken? Will the campus be immediately shut down? Will classes then be conducted online? So this really depends on the, on the circumstances. It depends on the gravity of the exposure. We are hopeful that given all of the precautions that we've been taking, as well as the protocols that we are putting together to address these situations, that we could manage it. The reality is that with the increased number of COVID positive cases anywhere in the nation and even here in Hawaii, it's likely that you will know of someone that knows of someone or you yourself um, have had some experience with COVID-19. We would hope that that go goes down, but in the interim, as it, be, as, as it is a possibility, uh, we want to control uh, what ultimately happens to the college and how it impacts everyone else. And so for instance, if there is a student or an employee or a visitor that happens to uh, test positive for COVID-19 through the Department of Health, we'll be able to tra um, tra track down you know, the areas that may have been potentially impacted. We have protocols in place for the sanitation of the spaces. We also have protocols in place where we may be able to shut down one or two classrooms depending on the exposure level. Um, do the sanitation, ask the groups that have been impacted to stay home in the interim and then come back so that we don't have such a big impact. And so it really depends on the circumstances. If it got to the point where the exposure level was so high and the risk was so high, we may be put in a position where we need to close the campus maybe for a short period of time. It really all depends on the circumstances and we are following guidance from the Department of Health as well as the University of Hawaii in making these decisions. We wanna make them timely. We wanna be respectful of everyone's um, um, privacy, but we also wanna make sure that everyone is, feels safe and comfortable in our, in our environment. Thank you. Another specific uh, course question that is applicable to many. Hi, I'm supposed to be having a class in my uh, in-class class for my anatomy class. I was just wondering what the situation will be like because it's always very full in the classrooms and we'll be, be needing to using masks the whole time. So in the classrooms, we are expecting the use of the, of the masks. In terms of the classroom capacities, we have done an assessment of space for each station so that we can promote more of that social distancing. In practical courses like would be in anatomy or, or any other practical course like automotive or culinary, there's usually folks that have to move around. We have to be cognizant of that and respect each other's space. But in terms of the number of individuals in any contained environment, we have done an assessment where we are reducing the number of people that are allowed at any given time. And so that experience of it being a little bit stuffy should not necessarily be the case. We've also, uh, worked on reducing the volume of furniture and things in spaces so that we have a little bit more room 
uh, for, for, for some of these classes. And so you should feel the difference. The, the, the capacities have been adjusted to promote that six foot social distancing. Perfect. So this is a question I'm sure many of the students who are checking to see their classes as the semester evolves, I, I think is, is on their minds and may not have a really solid answer at this time because everything's so fluid, but the student wants to know what the minimum number of registered students need to be to guarantee that the class will definitely be held. One of the classes has a very low number of registered student and I'm concerned that it's gonna be canceled. Sure, and, and, th and that's something that, that does happen from time to time. Depending on enrollment, we may need to uh, cancel a class. I would just say that it is pretty early, and I know that some of us have been anxious to register until we knew what the schedules would look like. Well, we're now in that position where the schedules are pretty much set with some minor adjustments here and there. And so we should see a little bit more enrollment. We still have a little over, over a month uh, before the semester starts. And so we will continue looking at those numbers. Another thing that's really important is whenever there are instances where you need to progress in your program or whether it's a class that's required for, for completion uh, of your degree, um, connect with your, with your counselor uh, because they would be able to guide you maybe into a different course that may be necessary or give you the green light that the class may still be running. In a time when we are reducing the, the capacity of each classroom, it is quite possible that you will see classes run with, with, with numbers lower than what you're typically used to seeing. And so all that I ask is that you connect with your counselor or, or someone on campus to ask those questions as we, as we get a little bit closer to, to the start of the semester and we would notify you and maybe help you find alternatives um, that will still help you meet your goals if that were to happen. Terrific. We have another student who's a little worried about online and uh, questions. I don't know how to set up an online class. Yes, and, <clears throat> and, I, and I think that many of us are experiencing that. And so what we've been doing is that we've been working to, prom to uh, develop more technological spaces on campus as well as working with our faculty and staff with new tools and technology. And all that that means is that for those of us that haven't ne uh, necessarily been in the online environment, especially in education, we may have a little bit of a hard time. And so we are developing some workshops, um, some of which have already been developed. It's just that we've been focusing those workshops to the students that were intentionally just taking online classes. Right now we're gonna begin opening some of these resources for students as well as opening other workshops where you may be able to zoom from your home into the workshop or even come to campus when you need some more uh, help. We wanna support you in, the, in, in, in your academic um, success and so um, we're putting together some more tools and, and packages to help, help out. There will be more opportunities for this to happen. We will be sending out um, communication so keep checking your email for some of these for some of these because some of these um, workshops have happened in, in the past uh, just keep that in mind and whenever and I as a student I remember one of the biggest mistakes I used to make is if I had a concern or a question I kept it to myself I'm hopeful that you can ask the questions and that and that you feel that you're connecting with individuals that can support you and so we are on campus and as the semester starts, the resources on campus will be here. And so all that you need to do is just ask for that help and we'll find a way of, of, of meeting you there. Perfect. This is a question for one of our new students. Um, wants to know, how do I know if I'm good to go or, or when to start at school? Like it, if I still need something to do to start? Sure, that, that's actually a great question because um, it's not always clear when there's something missing or when there's a hold. And so one of the best answers that I can provide is that if you're able to log into STAR, you would be able to see whether you have a hold or whether you're cleared. If you can't log into STAR, then I would say that you need to um, uh, contact our recruitment office. And so we're gonna have the contact information for all of these critical offices in our website on a link that's gonna be provided. 
uh, mainly because you can connect with uh, with a recruitment office if it's something like uh, generating your login credentials or whether there's something else that's missing, we would be able to guide you in making it through. And so I would hope that everyone that's listening would, would practice logging into STAR, looking at your schedules and seeing if anything is missing because we don't want to, um, we, we don't want to see you get to the point where you're about to start and then you cannot. Um, but, that, but that would be the best way to do it, going, going into STAR. And if you can't or see something that's a little funny, then you can connect with our recruitment office or your counselor for more support. And if we can um, show a slide from my laptop to our viewers, uh, this is um, the website that Carlos was mentioning. If you go to the homepage of Leeward, www.leeward.hawaii.edu, click on student info. It'll be a big button on the page. Right now, not all the information is 100% uh, up to date, but it is a place where all the contact information is gonna be to find out who your counselor is or to reach a recruitment office uh, as you're approaching becoming a student. So this is uh, a very important website the, with the student information, and we'll keep that up to date. So we're gonna exit now. You can go back to Carla so I can catch the next question, which is, I'm hoping to go fully online for the fall semester, and I'm planning to major in computer engineering. What's the option? Am I able to attend online classes for all the UH system campuses, or do I have to be a student at only one campus? So that, that's a great question. Uh, you should be able to take classes from different campuses if they are available and if they are online. You would have to work with your counselor in, in finding the right match because you do want to progress toward your program. Um, and so there are courses that may directly meet the, 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 the program objectives or maybe some general education that you could mix up for the fall semester just so that you could be fully online. There are some courses that are a little bit more difficult to offer fully online, and those may include some computer science courses. Anything that has to do with some technology may have some requirement or expectation that you come to campus, but your best bet is to connect with counseling uh, just so that you have the, a full guide of resources available to you so that you can continue making that progress. Okay, so we have another how do I understand when my classes are a question? On STAR GPS, one of my classes that I'm enrolled in says TBA. I am concerned as to what will happen to that class and how soon it will be official with the dates and times and the teacher who's running it. Sure, um, and so TBA uh, for the purposes of our classes, and again, the best source of this information is gonna be to connect with your instructor once all of this is up and going. Uh, but if your class has a www on it, meaning that it is an online class, and then you have a TBA next to it and not a specific time like Mondays from 9 to 10, um, if it's TBA, it means that your assignments are going to guide when things are due. This is the typical response, so not every case. Um, but it'll guide when your assignments are due versus having you meet every week at a specific time. And so, for instance, if you have a quiz every other week, that's going to be the deadline as opposed to it being that you're meeting on Wednesdays from 3 to 4. Um, and so there won't, there shouldn't be too much more of a change in the schedule. Uh, that TBA just implies that the class defines when things are due but not necessarily when you're meeting. Uh, we do have a, a document that's available to you online that identifies all of the classes that we're offering as well as when they meet. And so if you are able to cross-reference a class that you're taking to that, it may clarify to you a little bit more in as to when that class officially meets, if it meets at all. Okay, We have a, a student who was wondering about the classes that will be offered for the um, accelerated five-week courses. Um, so I'm going to uh, send this question over to the to the session that happens immediately after we're done here because we do have a dedicated workshop for the AA online where some of these uh, questions are gonna be answered um, because I don't have that specific information. Okay, 
next question is, and, and as a reminder to everybody, the links to these four breakout sessions that will be happening in about six minutes. Wow, the time is going fast. Um, those are in the description on, uh, right below the video. So the next question is, originally I had classes scheduled for Tuesdays and Thursdays from 10.30 to 2.45. I just found out it will be completely online. My question is, do I log in on those specific days and those times still? So we're, 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 we'll take you back to the best resource will be uh, one star and to your instructor because they'll give you more specific instruction and details. Uh, but for the most part, and um, start the, the schedule has specified whether you need to be, whether on campus or online, uh, logged in at a, at a specific moment. And so, for instance, if it is www Wednesdays 1 to 2, uh, then there is an expectation that you are online at that time. Um, if it's TBA, then there isn't that discrete expectation. Um, and so in STAR, you should be able to identify that based on where, on, on what's listed immediately after the www uh, portion of the schedule. You know, Carlos, I'm going to take a moment and, mm -hmm. and also ask um, the guys in the control uh, booth. This seems to be a question that's popped up a lot. And so I asked one of our most brilliant staff people on campus who does not want me to share her name with anybody, but just to take a screenshot. So I don't know how clear this is going to be uh, as you're watching on YouTube, but underneath your class, this is in STAR GPS, where it has the course title and then the dates, August 24th through December 18th, the line under it will either say a day of the week, like Wednesday, 12 noon to 1.15 p.m., then there's a slash and it says www. So that means it's an online class that meets at a, speci at a specific time, online scheduled. And then if you look on the other side, that one has TBA, www and that's what um, the chancellor has been explaining where you, you've got to see what the instructor is saying and check in laulima to see when things are specifically due but you can do that work at any time so you don't have to come in and be with a class of people at the same time we're calling that online unscheduled we have um, an explanation of all the different kinds of uh, ways the classes are being taught and we have that again click on student info on the home page and we'll have some more explanation and so we're going to go back to carlos so that i can go back to another question and just to let everybody know we have just about four more minutes so we'll probably have only one or two more questions um, So I'm an incoming student from Maui, but deciding to stay home, and I want to take my uh, classes. How do I change all my classes to online? Sure, and so depending on your specific situation, you can probably just go into STAR and make those changes by looking at classes that are already scheduled to be online. I would probably look at the schedule that you're in right now because some of those classes may have already changed to online. And finally, I would probably say connect with your counselor uh, because they would be able to guide you for some other online classes that you may be able to take to fulfill your scheduling needs. Okay, I, just, I have just one very quick question. Uh, many of you uh, out there may not know that our chancellor has four children in the Department of Education. And so he, like many of you, are trying to figure out what's gonna happen. Carlos, do you have any advice to the, uh, students right now who have children and are trying to figure out how am I going to balance school and not knowing what to do? Not that you have any advice, I'm just saying maybe you do. Well, I guess if I had an answer, I wouldn't be as anxious for the start. <laughs> but I, w w what, what I will advise is that if you are able to work in a remote capacity and you are able to take your classes from home, then the child care situation for children that may not be able in, in school all the time can be really uh, a major relief. Um, and so I would say you could easily become a fully online student this semester and take advantage of that while helping your family uh, go through this shift in scheduling environment. 
Um, I will say too that learning some of the resources online can support your, you can help support your own students that may be going through that um, online environment. I could tell you that I have gotten notification from the school that my children go to um, where they're gonna be um, on um, one day in, one day out. And, and that's really difficult for us to manage. And so the online environment certainly helps. The other thing that I will say is that it may be like my situation. I have four children, and so there's never a dull moment in our home, um, and it's never quiet enough. Uh, you can come to campus and use our, our Wi-Fi, our technology. In some spaces, it'll be limited, but there will be some spaces where you could come on campus to take your online classes and have some uh, relief from the noise that may exist in your homes. And so while I realize that that doesn't necessarily address most of the challenges that everyone's facing, um, I do think that having that as a sanctuary or as an option uh, for addressing uh, your unique needs is, 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 really, is really amazing. And so I would totally consider online and I think that the experience is wonderful and that you would benefit from it. Thank you so much. And this is now a perfect time to switch over to our uh, different breakout sessions that we have. I wanna thank you so much, Chancellor Panelosa, for taking uh, not only the time, but giving us uh, some advice, especially on the kids and online at the same time. If we can have, I've got the slide up. So just click on the links. Uh, we should have four very, very fabulous people waiting to answer any questions you have on paying for college, the online AA program, returning to college, or what your next steps are to become a Leeward student. Mahalo for joining us.